Welcome to Season 2, Episode 6, Los Vampiros, The Vampires. So we're in the season of autumn, and we welcome you back to Patroma Therapy. And we hope that uh, you're having a, having a good fall season if you're in the northern hemisphere. I'm not sure what's happening down, down south, but we've made an episode about autumn and angels the sun being wound up, trying to relax, and then today, vampires. So, how do you feel about vampires today? Uh, first of all, let me ask you, what makes a vampire to you? What does it mean? What makes, what oh, makes va- a vampire to you? What makes a vampire? I mean, what, are the, what, what is a vampire? Yeah, is it having like a creature who drinks blood for food or who doesn't have a heartbeat and who stays out of the sun, the immortality? What would be like the, what qualifies, a, I don't know, the creature as a vampire? What do you think? Oh, okay. Well, I think most of the vampires are, are boys. They're like, they're mainly boys. Most of the vampires I've met are bo- men. I actually met a guy at a bar while and so he was trying to explain to me that he was a vampire, but he was just like bluffing me. So anyhow, they should have like teeth, a little bit pointed teeth. They hang out at night. They're like, they're kind of sexy. They kind of try to seduce you and like get you to go off with them. And then they, they don't come out in the morning, I think, because they're hungover. But they sleep in, some of them sleep in coffins. And they... um are kind of in this club it's kind of like a vampire club or cult and um they don't eat like regular food they need they need new victim so they're like always out prowling around looking for for new people to bite and um you know they they hang out in the in the dark and also they're around cemeteries and uh yeah they're they are called part of the undead so they Mm -hmm. actually were once a person but something got messed up and their spirit is still wandering the earth you know that's uh, when you said that they're kind of boys and sexy i thought that a vampire is supposed to be an awful creature but we all know that charmingly aristocratic character count dracula he was from romania um yes he was like very much good looking dude go ahead Well, you know, the story of uh, Dracula was written by Bram Stoker in 1897. And it's the story of Count Dracula, who was based on the legend of this uh, Vlad, Vladimir guy. But, uh, yeah, 1897 is kind of the turn of the century. Also, 1899... Freud was writing the interpretation of dreams and talking about the dark unconscious side. So for me, the story of Dracula kind of fits with this turn of the century, uh, you know, kind of, kind of dark stuff, you know, Uh follow the house of Usher, Edgar Allan Poe, Freud, spooky stuff. Um, Unlike, unlike, you know, the new incarnation uh, all those good-looking young vampires um, in the Twilight series. I'm not sure if you've seen it. Um, they're, oh, yeah. They're everybody, beautiful was, young... everybody was watching that. Yeah. How did you like that series? I liked that a lot. I mean, not the series, just one scene somehow. The first movie. Mo- not the series, the movie. I liked that. Was it 15 years ago? The scene when they play baseball game uh, it's like one of my favorites it still is i um watch it from now and then on youtube what do you like about it they're all beautiful and those vampires they're all beautiful young people (laughs) i mean mostly women that attract me the woman but uh, sunlight just makes them fabulous you know they're like uh, they have nothing to do with that garlic or steaks or whatever they're good ones. Oh, no, no, no. The vampire women are always luring men who have money 
to go out to dinner for like expensive things and then they they like suck out your blood and your money and leave you the next morning and like boom they're gone and you wonder like wow what was that it was a great night same thing with boy vampires they're like always hanging around doing seductive stuff but i think the story of of the vampire has to it it originates from our unconscious desires to live forever you know they're, they're supposedly immortal and they are beautiful and many of them are very attractive and i think as we as we age we wonder about death and life after death and what's and happening she, to she, our she, beauty or our since power you mentioned, or our since variety you mentioned so it. yeah if they're attractive go ahead, go ahead. Okay, since you mentioned it, I just yeah. you call them undead, and I thought as being a distinct unlife. Could I call vampires unlife instead of undead? Would that be um, uh, a wrong thing? No, to they're do? not unlive. If they're, yeah, that's wrong. Un means not, so the undead means they're not dead. They somehow live. Their life is at, at night. Hmm. So. That makes sense. They're they're part of the creatures that prowl the night, like werewolves and ghosts and spirits and goblins. And October thirty first is Halloween, and then November first and second is Dia de los Muertos, Day of the Dead. And so we're we're in a season where a lot of people, many different cultures, are thinking about the afterlife and cemeteries and their ancestors that have died and. I think death is death is kind of on a lot of people's mind. I mean, I didn't mean to depress you. No, no, no. I'm happy already depressed. About Sophie the Sophie. shining. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> it's just that um, since we are on it, uh, some I read it somewhere. I or maybe I just knew it from the very beginning that the vampire graves, like if someone uncover the corpses. Of the vampire from the medieval times, they were always buried with an iron stake uh, to stop them joining the undead again. So that's probably the only thing to stop the creature. Well, they're still there, so maybe that uh, that works. Well, also another part of the mythology <clears throat> is that um, uh, if you have a cross, that you can show the the vampire the cross. Uh, and the vampire shrinks away from from the risen Christ on the cross, and so there's the cross, there's the uh, garlic, and then also the legend of the garlic I had heard was that you know when you're like hanging around cemeteries and decomposed bodies and stuff like that, I mean even some clubs at night can be sort of smelly, but um, you know garlic would repel the decomposing body smells or the vapors that come up out of out of a cemetery and then the idea that you should stab the vampire through the heart um you know that is that's where the blood pumps from so that you know that that probably makes sense they also uh, they also if i'm not mistaken the vampire I, never I, appear go ahead appears in the mirror uh, so that somehow, but the mirror probably should have come from old times because they've been covered with uh, silver at the time, and I don't know how do they mir make mirrors these days. So maybe you have to have like old time mirror in yes. order to spot the vampire. <clears throat> Not sure if you have one. Well, it's interesting. I mean, mirrors have always been considered portals to another world, and when we're entering the season of Halloween and Day of the Dead, uh, there are different cultures that, that believe that the spirits of our ancestors come back to visit us for the evening. And uh, a lot of different families go to cemeteries and have picnics and bring food and talk about grandpa who died or old uncle so-and-so. And, and so I think this idea of the, of, of a, thin veil between this world and the next is something that attra is attractive to all of us and mirrors mirrors have always been fascinating to me i love to collect old mirrors 
like I'm I'm like kind of a, a little bit of a mirror addict, but not because I want to look at myself, but because I'm fascinated by the idea of who looked into these mirrors. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, it, well it's it's I, just a little bit crazy. So like that's why I'm in therapy. <laughs> I. I think just maybe the mirror somehow important because we look at the mirror from a childhood. We see how we were like five years old and we see how we are like 50 years old. But when you get turned, I read it somewhere yeah. too, or I've seen it in a movie, when you get turned, you stop aging. And maybe because a mirror that shows you these changes, it somehow stop you from reflection, from making reflection, from reflecting the mirror. Because you stopped aging, the mirror cannot see you somehow, maybe. That's how they spot the vampire or spot it in now you why do you stop aging why do you stop because aging you're a vampire. vampire if you see in the twilight uh they're all young and beautiful but some of them are like 300 years old which is impossible for ordinary humans probably because uh once you're turned to your stop aging and uh, i'm not sure if i'd like to trade my life for this but the uh, idea has merit well, the other thing is, well, I, I think the I, I actually think that we are many people are attracted to the idea of eternal youth or eternal beauty or living forever. But I've also found that that uh, vampires are tired, you know, and 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 they're exhausted. And I've I don't know I've seen different movies and things where like they're hanging out at clubs and bars and like you know they they're kind of kind of pale and. You know, it, it might be tiring to live forever. I don't know. I, I came across something. I, I knew we were going to record about the vampires today, and somehow, boom, I came across this quote that I wonder who sent this to me. Uh, it's a quote by Franz Kafka, who wrote The Metamorphosis and The Trial and some other crazy things. But uh, Kafka says, there are only bloody fairy tales all fairy tales originate from the depths of blood and fear mm -hmm. and i think that you know fairy tales and myths and stories of vampires and creatures i think it's true that that you know fear is one of our core instincts and you know in russian fairy tales there's stories of children going into the woods and witches and i think vampires are part of that whole whole group Probably. Are there are there some Russian vampires? I stories? know that I just uh, remember of, but I know there have been reports from Russia, from Poland, from Bulgaria, from Romania, of course. Um, maybe that's the region where, where you know, where they all live. Well, I had always thought of the vampire associated with Transylvania. And then I looked at something that said the, the Slavic countries, these folkloric traditions, the word vampire, vampire, comes from an old Russian, old Russian word, uh, uh, vapir. I don't know any old Russian, but V-P-I-R, vapir. And th then I came across something else that was talking about um, the real Dracula was some kind of um, Vlad the Impaler who fought in the Holy Roman Empire against the Ottoman Turks and the that this guy Vladimir was knighted. He was made a knight and he was supposed to go out there and fight the, the Ottomans who were like invading. And actually they got this guy Vlad got captured and, and put into a castle, but it was not in Transylvania, it was actually in Turkey. And, uh, you know, I've traveled a bit in, in Turkey, and this castle that had been discovered and reported in the Smithsonian Magazine was called Tokat Castle. And so some archaeologists are trying to figure out, maybe this could be, you know, Vlad the Impaler, his... his uh, his castle and then back to to the origin of the word dracula or vampire one legend is that this guy vladimir who became you know a count he was part of the order of the of the dragons and in old romanian the word for dragon is drac d-r-a-c hmm. 
so that's kind of kind of a kind of a long a long route but uh yeah well, you know I, a route but I've... yeah that whole area is uh you know has all, all the legends are coming from from this slavic area well it's officially a night time here which is uh, it, by here i'm in the slavic area and i uh, i think i have enough horror stories to put me to sleep and i think we should wrap it up for today very good well i hope that you have a peaceful night's sleep Thank and you. it's bright and sunny here in dallas and we wish all of our subscribers well and keep your eyes peeled for vampires goodbye <laughs>